now we go to the next technique which is called irr most important technique like npv one of the most important technique let's understand first some basic calculation and then i come to maybe a problem or maybe just the concept will be sufficient today i'm not sure let's see as we proceed let's first discuss this now let's assume i'm investing 10000 today in an fd in an fd first year it gives me 10% interest in the calculator 10000 plus 10% again plus 10% Again plus ten percent. Again plus ten percent. Give me the number. Fourteen. Six forty one in fourth year. Fourteen six forty one in fourth year. Any doubts till this? This is the example. Okay, ten thousand today, and you are getting back what? Fourteen six forty one in the fourth year. <coughs> now somebody said, let's calculate the profit. Let's calculate the Profit. So, in your books of accounts, what you would have done is you invested 10,000. You got back 14, 641. Profit for 4 years. Profit for 4 years is how much? 4641. Four, profit for 4 years is 4641. Four, Annual profit divide by 4. Annual profit divide by 4. 1160 one, one, approximately. 11. Six zero. That is my every year profit. That is my every year profit in my books of accounts. Okay, in my books of accounts. ARR one one six zero divided by ten thousand eleven point six percent. Eleven point six percent. Now the problem is bank is saying I am paying you ten percent, and your calculation is showing eleven point six percent. Something is wrong. Bank is saying I am paying what ten percent, and you did your calculation. You did your calculation. You are showing eleven point 6%. How is it become 11.6? 10,000. I added 10%, 10%, 10%. You gave me the number. I wrote the number. Profit, I told you how much you said. 4641. Annual profit we calculated. ARR is 11.6%. But bank, I went to the bank and asked. He is still saying I am paying you only 10%. I am paying you only 10%. ARR technique ignores time value of money. ARR technique ignores time value of money. So, variant of ARR technique is the IRR technique, internal rate of return. Wait for some time, nothing much for you to write. Listen for some time. Year cash flow. Year 0, I have an outflow of 10,000. Year 0, I have an outflow of 10,000. Year 4, I get inflow of 14,641. I get inflow of 14,641. What I did is... I said, let me do PVF at 9%. PVF at 9%. Just one number, okay? Then I said, let me do PVF at 11%. And do PVF at 10%, okay? Three numbers I have taken. 9%, 11%, and 10%. Here, 0 is 1. 1 divided by 1.09, 4 times, you don't tell me the number. 0.70. Eight. Three decimal. Three decimal. Give me eleven percent. One divided by one point one one four times. Six five. Eight seven. Eight. Okay. Six five nine. Then eight seven is six five nine. Please round off properly. Six five nine. PVF for ten percent. Six eight. Three. Okay. I've done all this calculation. So three numbers I've taken. Nine percent I've taken. Eleven percent I've taken. 10% I've taken. What I do is I calculate DCF. I discount at these rates and calculate DCF. So DCF is equal to 10,000 into 1, 14,641 into 0 0.708. 0 0.708. Year cash flow PVF DCF. Again, year cash flow PVF DCF. Again, year cash flow PVF DCF. So I do this calculation also. And I repeat this calculation also. For this, I am calculating NPV. 365 is the NPV. This also I am calculating NPV. This also I am calculating NPV. I have calculated NPV for three scenarios. See, NPV can keep changing if you change the discount rate. If you change the discount rate. Last question, you did 8%. 
I tell do 10 percent, you will get a different answer. Do 11 percent, you will get a different answer. Do 5 percent, you will get a different answer. IRR is the rate of return at which NPV is zero. IRR is the rate of return at which what NPV is zero. If it is zero, it means you are recovering what you invested. It means you are recovering what you have invested. It means you are recovering what you have invested considering the time value of money. So, in this question, I get zero NPV at this stage. So, this is my ERR, which is basically 10%. I told initially 10%. No, that is the return I generate from this fixed deposit. I don't know why accounting said 11.6. 10 is the right answer. 10 is the Right answer. IRR is the rate of return at which what? NPV of the project is zero. Now, for example, this question we did, we have to somehow find that what discount rate will give me zero NPV? What discount rate will give me zero NPV? Eight gave me positive. If you make it nine, your NPV may go down. If you make it 10, it may further go down. At some stage, you will get what? zero you will get zero that is what your objective is your objective is to find what where are you going to get zero npv where we are going to get zero npv irr is the rate of return at which npv is zero if npv is positive if npv is positive it means i am earning more than what is needed if i am generating a positive npv i am earning more than 9%. I am earning more than 9%. Because 9% you did discounting. You got positive NPV. Last problem you did. You got positive NPV. It means you are earning more than 8%. How much? I don't know. But earning more than 8%. What number it is? Is what the segment of the discussion is all about. If you get negative NPV. It means you are earning less than what is needed. It means you are earning less than what is needed. There are three parts here. One is that yellow shaded one which is the IRR, which is the IRR because at this stage my NPV is what? Zero. My NPV is zero. IRR is the rate of return at which what? NPV is zero. If you get positive NPV, it means you are earning more than nine. If you get negative NPV, it means you are earning less than 11. It means you are earning less than 11. What are you earning? Exactly 10%. What are you earning is exactly 10%. So, how do I calculate IRR is trial and error method. Trial and error method. What will we do in trial and error? First, we will take one rate. Calculate NPV. If you get positive, you will have to repeat till you get one positive, one negative. If you get exact zero, best problem is over. If you are getting exact zero, that is the IRR. Exact zero, that is the IRR. But getting exact zero is difficult. Getting exact zero is difficult. So, what I need to do is I need to get one positive one negative, one positive, one, one negative and then use a technique called interpolation. Use a technique called interpolation to get to the answer. I will explain each of this. But our objective is to what? To get one positive NPV and one negative NPV. If you get exact zero, very happy that is the IRR. Very happy that is the IRR which will be a rare scenario. Which will be a rare scenario. But otherwise what I need to do is I need to start with some rate. Get one positive one negative get one positive and one negative in an exam situation what ICA may do for few questions to make it simpler for us in fact most of the exam question they do this they may give something like this below which means IRR is somewhere in between this 14 to 18 try at 14 try at 16 try at 18 you can keep trying at some of the these rates and somewhere in between you will get one positive one negative one positive one one negative but otherwise what rate to start with will become a challenge for that i have some shortcut i'll explain as we proceed but our objective is to do what get one positive and one negative if you are able to get one positive and one negative problem gets over at that stage you will have to then use a formula you will have to use a formula i'll come to formula in some time but let's assume I get this. So I put this in a graph. 9% NPV is 365. 9% it is 365. 11% negative 351. Negative 351 or negative 352. 
somewhere in between you will get zero npv somewhere in not exactly in between when you do a problem it may not be exact in between here it's exact in between but take a somewhere you will get a zero npv somewhere you will get a zero npv that is what is called irr that is what is called irr somewhere in between somewhere in between what rate i don't know i'll have to do the calculation this approach gives me an approximate answer it will only give me an approximate answer you want exact answer i can use excel formula to get the exact answer excel can give me answer for any scenario any scenario i want to calculate i put the year cash flow excel has a formula formula will give me the answer that is exact irr that is exact irr but this is a trial and error this is a trial and error approximate answer now what is approximate answer what is the difference in interest rate 2% what is the difference in npv can you tell me the difference between two Seven not positive is becoming negative. It's not three sixty five minus three fifty two. Three sixty five minus of minus three fifty two. Minus of minus three fifty two. How much? Seven one. Seven. Now what concept is saying is two percent. If you change NPV is changing by how much? Seven one seven. What should be the percentage so that this three sixty five becomes zero? If two is equal to seven one seven, if two is equal to seven one seven, question mark is equal to three sixty five. Question mark is equal to three sixty five. You will do a cross multiplication. You will do a cross multiplication. I'll repeat again. Two is equal to what? Seven one seven. Question mark is equal to three sixty five. Tell me that question mark. One point zero one. So nine. Plus another one point zero one is my IRR nine plus another one point zero one is my IRR. I'll give a formula for this, but this is the timeline approach. This is the timeline approach. What is the timeline approaches? I wrote for nine. I wrote it for eleven. The gap between the two is two percent. This two percent unfortunately made my positive become negative. Made my positive become negative. I am wanting that exact zero. Getting exact zero is very Difficult. So what I did, I said two is equal to seven one seven. Question mark is equal to three sixty five. You told me one point zero one nine plus another one point zero one nine plus another one point zero one. IRR is ten point zero one, which is approximate answer. Exact answer is ten percent. Exact answer is ten percent. Any doubts on this? I'll repeat again. What we are trying to do is, we are trying to find at what discount rate will I have zero NPV. If you have zero NPV, it means you are earning that much. It means you are earning that much. If you are generating positive, it means you are earning more than the discount rate. You are earning more than the discount rate. And if you are getting a negative NPV, it means you are earning lesser than the discount rate. Lesser than the discount rate. So when I do an IRR calculation, I may get one NPV, two NPV, three NPV, four, five. Those are not the NPV answers. NPV answer. If you want, you have to discount at what discount rate is given in the question. For example, last problem NPV answer is two zero three eight ninety one. If I want, I can now do ten percent discounting. I can do twelve percent discounting. I can do fourteen percent discounting. I can do sixteen percent discounting. I can do discounting at any rate I want. I can do discounting at any rate I want. By doing this process, I will generate one positive NPV and what? One negative NPV, one positive and one negative. Practical world. If I want IRR, this is the cash flow. Last question. I'm just taking the last question. This is the cash flow. If I want IRR, I just need to apply the formula, and the IRR is equal to last question. Fifteen point four five percent is the IRR for the last question. Fifteen point four five percent is the IRR for the last question. You did eight percent. Got positive NPV. I may repeat ten. I may repeat twelve. I may repeat fourteen. I may repeat sixteen. I have to repeat till I get one positive, one negative. In exam question, they may give the table below it, which will give you a guidance as to what rate to start with. What rate to start with? Otherwise, I have one formula shortcut. I'll explain that shortcut later. Our objective, let's understand very clearly, is to get what one positive NPV and one negative NPV. Practical world, is there any utility of that? No. Practical world, you put the cash flow, and I'll apply the formula. The formula will give me the IRR. See, objectives in exam you cannot use Excel. 
internationally courses on finance gives you a flexibility to use scientific calculator in the scientific calculator or the financial calculator you put the data irr is one of the functions there irr is one of the functions in a financial calculator so technically whatever i'm going to explain you does not serve much purpose but still i have to do calculation from an exam point of view because i need what one positive one negative and then get to the irr concept clarity is very critical till that what is the clarity when you do discounting you can change discount rate as per your wish if you increase the discount rate npv will go down if you increase the discount rate npv will go down at 9% npv was 365 at 10 it became zero at 11 it became negative 350 at 12 it will become negative 500 at 13 it will become negative 600 negative 800 the negative amount will keep going up as you increase the discount rate as you increase the discount rate our objective is to find exactly so if i put it from a chart point of view any problem you do this is not possible for you to do but let's assume last question you did eight percent you got npv of two lakh 2 lakh is here positive okay if you do 10 percent this will go down if you do 12 percent further it will go down if you do 14 further it will go down at some stage it will reach zero which was 15.45 which was 15.45 then it will keep going up keep going down you will reach negative trajectory also our objective is to find one positive one negative and do a approximate answer do a approximate answer to get to IRR. Do an approximate answer to get to the IRR. Clear any doubts on this? Let me explain it from the concept book now again so that the concept is very clear for you. So, IRR is the rate of return earned by the project what considering the time value of money. Considering the time value of money. I said 10,000. Add 10 percent. Add 10 percent. Add 10 percent. Add 10 percent. I told you to keep adding it. I told you to keep adding it you added those percentages and told me some 14640 i asked you 14640 minus 10000 what is the profit you told me 4641 i said average profit is 1160 divide by 10000 11.6 this is considering sorry ignoring time value of money this is ignoring time value of money what is considering time value of money do discounting of it do discounting of it some students in the past have got confused saying that if NPV is zero, we are not earning any return. No, that's not the logic. If NPV is zero, it means you are earning exactly the discount rate. Exactly the discount rate. If you are generating positive, it means you are earning more than the discount rate. What is the discount rate we use? Cost of capital. We use cost of capital. Initially, when I explained, I said there is an investment decision. There is a financing decision. Investment means earning money. Financing means paying back to the shareholder. So technically both are interrelated. This cost of capital no, comes from the financing decision. Comes from the financing decision. My shareholders, debt holders, preference shareholders all put together want 8% in that question which you did previously. And you are earning 15.45. You are earning 15.45. That is why you generated positive. If these guys say no, no, I don't want 8. Give me 12. Give me 12. So if you give me 12, what will happen? In this problem which you did, we had year 0, no need to write this, year 2, year 3, year 5. If I do 12%, 1 divided by 1.12, these are the PVF at 12%, these are the PVF at 12%. No need to worry about the calculation part. I did 12%. Last question which you did. Your answer changes to 86,000. Your answer changes to 86,000 at what rate? 12%. You got at 8%. You got at 8% some answer. You got at 8%. Now, instead of 12, I will make it 14. I will make this at 14. If I do 14, I am still generating positive. I am still generating positive. Let me make it 16. If I make it 16, I am generating what? Negative. I am generating negative. Let me do 15.45. 1.1545. 1 1.1545. Let me do 15.45. I am getting 0. That 76 is rounding off. That 76 is a rounding off difference. We are getting what? Exactly 0. Exact 0 is what I am trying to find. Exact 0 is what I am trying to find. Now, you do not have the flexibility of doing all this calculation. To me, this took 
exactly 30 seconds to keep repeating one calculation changing 10 12 14 16 18 20 i can keep changing it in exam that flexibility is not there because time is very critical so that is why we'll have to somehow find two rates and find it at the earliest possible you cannot do 8 then do 10 then do 12 then do 14 then do 16 so much if you do it will take up a lot of time because i need one positive and one negative so how can i get to that rate in a faster manner you will understand as we proceed but objective is to find what at what rate at what rate my npv is going to be zero my npv is going to be zero again i'm repeating npv zero does not mean we are not earning any return npv zero means my investment is giving exactly what my financiers want exactly what my financiers are wanting what does financier want cost of capital cost of capital which is a separate chapter but cost of capital is nothing but equity dividend preference dividend and interest put together equity preference and interest put together if i'm exactly earning what they want i'll get zero npv i'll get zero npv it says npv is positive npv is positive irr is greater than the discount rate irr is greater than the discount rate i've used the word discount rate not cost of capital reason for using the word discount rate is you can keep changing the discount rate you can keep changing the discount rate you cannot change the cost of capital but you can keep changing the discount rate you wish to start with 8 then 10 then 12 then 14 then 16 if it's exactly zero irr is equal to what discount rate and if it's negative if it is negative irr is less than discount rate assuming you did your calculation you got a positive npv you got a positive npv what i will do is i'll increase the discount rate i'll increase the discount rate i may again get positive that is a problem for me if i again get positive is a problem for me so what i will do is i will keep trying this till i get one positive and one negative npv last problem which you did can you tell me what is arr on average investment last question which you did arr on average investment do into two by three of that Thirteen point five. Final IRR in eighty ninety percentage of the question will be closer to this number which you calculated. Two third of ARR on average investment. So when I do a problem, you told me thirteen point five. No, I'll start at fourteen percent. I'll start at fourteen percent. I may get a positive. I'll increase it to sixteen. I may get negative. One positive, one negative, and my answer is over. One positive. Again, it is just in case. The question below does not give a table. The question below does not give a table saying 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Nothing is given. What can I do? I will try this approach. I will try this approach. That is calculating what? ARR on average investment. How to calculate ARR on average investment? You know that. How to calculate this? Known to you. What will we do is, in order to calculate IRR, it is essential to have what? Two discounting rates. If these rates are provided in the question, if these rates are provided in the question, there are problems where question will say, use 10 and 12 percent to calculate IRR. Use 10 and 12 percent to calculate IRR. No problem. I will start with 10, increase it to 12. If these rates are provided, what? Utilize them. Otherwise, it becomes necessary to make an initial assumption. Initial assumption on guess rate and proceed. You cannot start with 8, then increase it to 10, then increase it to 12, then increase it to 14. One rule is the gap between the two rates cannot be very high. If you keep a very high gap, the accuracy of your answer will go down. Somebody says, I'll do 8 and then do 20. If you keep such a high gap, your answer, final IRR will be highly inaccurate. Will be highly inaccurate. Maximum gap I can have is 5%. Maximum I can have is 5%. Whatever problems I do in class, I'll only do 2% gap. I'll only do... 2% gap. Objective is to somehow get to the answer. Somehow get to the answer. Understand the crux of the IRR. Crux of the IRR is getting to know at what rate will I get 0 NPV. If you have understood this in practical world, I will apply formula like this and close it. I will apply formula like this and close it. There is zero utility of what I am doing beyond this from a practical world point of view. But yes, in exams, you need to calculate IRR. You don't have a choice. What you should be very clear is the clarity on the concept because if I want, I will say a company calculated the NPV, it is 12,000 rupees at a discount rate of 
what is the likely IRR? I'll give you three choice greater than 10, less than 10, equal to 10. So you need to choose exactly the answer. You need to choose. That is the clarity which I would want from a student rather than exact IRR calculation. Exact IRR calculation, yes, I have to do it. But if I want to test in an MCQ, in an MCQ, I can link what? NPV and IRR concept. NPV. For example, last problem, we got positive NPV or negative NPV. The last one which you did positive it means irr will be greater than eight percent irr will be greater than eight how much i don't know it will be greater than eight percent if you get negative irr will be lesser than eight percent irr will be lesser than and if you're getting exact zero irr is equal to eight percent irr is equal to eight percent compute the accounting rate of return on the average investment the initial guess rate can be taken as what 2 by 3 of ARR on average investment. Will it work in every problem? No, I am not giving you that confidence that it will work in every problem. But it may work in many, many questions. It may work in many questions. Again, I am repeating in an exam situation, most of the times, most of the times, ICI gives those two rates below. Gives those two rates below. So, whatever I am telling here may not be that relevant. May not be that relevant. It comes into picture only when what? I do not give you the rates. This is the formula I have explained you the timeline approach, but now whatever I did in timeline, I'm going to do it in the formula. I'm going to do it in the formula. In my example, I have done 9 and 11. Ignore 10 for the time being because 10 is exact 0. 10 is exact 0. I've done 9 and 11. So what is 9 and 11 is L1 means lower discount rate. Lower discount rate. Between 9 and 11, which is the lower discount rate? 9 plus NPV at L1. How much is the NPV at 9%? 365 divided by 365 minus of minus minus of minus NPV at 11 percent is 352 into L2 minus L1 into L2 minus L1. If you apply the answer, you will get 10.0. Now, wait. If you see this, if you see this part, it is nothing but I told you to do this cross multiplication 2 is equal to 717, question mark is equal to. 365. For cross multiplication, what you will do? 365 divided by 717 into 2. 365 divided by 717 into 2, which is what this formula is all about. So, it's a lengthy formula. The logic of the formula I have given you. In exam, if you want to write formula, write it. You don't want to write the formula, do it in the timeline manner. Answer is going to remain same. Answer is going to remain same. 9 plus what I told you to, how you calculated this 1.01, if you can visualize 1.01 calculation, you have done 365 divided by 717 into 2. 365 divided by 717 into 2 and exactly what this formula is telling. Exactly what this formula is telling. Any doubts on this? Any doubts on this part? Understood? Can you get me the IRR here? One positive, one negative I have given here. Get me the IRR here. Whether you want to put it in a timeline, put it in a timeline, apply formula, apply formula. That's your wish. Get me the IRR for this. NPV at 10%, NPV at 11%. One positive, one negative. You can do it in the timeline approach. You can do it in the formula approach, whichever is comfortable for you. Formula is L1. L1 means lower discount rate. NPV at L1 divided by NPV at L1 minus NPV at L2 into L2 minus L1. I This is an interpolation technique. This is how what logic says is you have 10, you have 11. 10 is 1, 2, 5, 0. 11 is minus 200. Somewhere in between you have a 0 NPV. Somewhere in between you have a 0 NPV. What is the calculation? 10 plus the difference in the rate is 1%. The difference in the rate is 1%. Difference in NPV is 1450. So 1% is leading to a change in NPV of 1450. What percentage will lead to 1250 change? What percentage will lead to 1250 change? So 10 plus 
वन टू फाइव जीरो डिवाइडेड बाई वन फोर फाइव जीरो इन टू वन वॉट द आंसर यू गेट टेन पॉइंट एट सिक्स परसेंट एनी डाउट ऑन दिस एनी डाउट ऑन दिस नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल स्टार्ट डूइंग लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम ऑन दिस दिस इज द कोर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आई आर आर कोर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आई आर आर आई आर आर इज द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न एट विच वॉट एनपीवी ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इज जीरो अगेन आई एम रिपीटिंग एनपीवी जीरो डज नॉट मीन यू आर नॉट अर्निंग एनी रिटर्न बिकॉज सम स्टूडेंट्स गॉट कंफ्यूज दट NPV zero means you are exactly earning the discounted. Exactly earning the discounted. If you get positive, you are earning more. That is why I said select a project with positive NPV because I earn more than what my liabilities want. I earn more than what my my assets earn. Liabilities I spend on the liabilities I spend. So on the liability, what is the liability? Equity shares, preference shares, long term debt. I have to give them something which is called cost of capital. What assets are earning is called the IRR. So if you earn more. positive npv if you earn less it's negative npv clear any doubts on this with this we'll end the session <coughs>